back out here. So today we are testing out, doing some field testing of the Vortex Fury, the 5000 AB Applied Ballistics. And uh, I'm trying to get some more information prior to uh, headed to the match in Wyoming coming up pretty soon. So next week, the 22nd, I'll be flying out. One of the things that we had talked about on the chat last night, or maybe it was the night before, was um, can you basically get rid of the Kestrel? And again, I'm still saying no. The reason why I'm saying no is I'm going to do a comparison. Right now, the Kestrel, it's 5700. This is the Elite Ballistics. And this are not linked together at all. So I'm basically taking the data from the Kestrel and then also the data from the Fury 5000. And I'm seeing how close they are. And so far, uh, prior to going live, I, I was able to use my app. And there was quite a few things that you could do with it. How's it going, Joaquin? There's quite a few things you could do with it within the app, which is really cool. You can actually put it on a tripod or I guess a bench or anything. Basically hit the range button on your phone and whatever it's pointed at, it'll give you the exact distance and then also give you your ballistics for your rifle. Um, so that's kind of neat. But where this is going to help us out in the field more than likely for the kind of shooting that, that we'll be doing this uh, in a couple weeks, is I'm basically gonna be carrying this tripod along with the Fury 5000, and we're gonna have to basically bring all our stuff to the next stage. It's kind of a timed event, so you'll be hopefully running or jogging, and then uh, you're gonna have to find those targets. So not only do you need to be able to see what you're trying to find, you know, we got a 10 by 42, so 10 power basically binocular, and then also the a lot of information that's in here. What's up, Eagle Eye? A lot of information what's in here is already in here. So this does this does quite a bit of stuff. One thing it does not do is if you're good at guessing what the wind is, you can actually point you can actually point this in the direction of the wind and give it its own reading, what you think it is. Say it, say we guess it's five miles an hour. I can turn this like this. Say the wind's coming from that direction. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's the wind button right there. That'll tell you, that tells this thing which direction the wind's coming out of. So right now we have probably, let me just find out what we got. Let's see what we got. Capture, all right. Right now we got a breeze at four miles an hour coming. If, if this is my shooting area, it's basically coming at nine o'clock. So basically um, full wind value, but at four miles an hour, which isn't too much depending on what you're shooting. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna move you guys over here a little bit closer. And there went my battery cord. Let me plug this back in real quick. And what we did was on this data card right here, the Kestrel was telling me that it was 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, as far as uh, pressure, I was getting 27.66 and with a relative humidity of 57 degrees out of this, the Kestrel. Out of just using this, I was getting 83 degrees, so there's only a one degree difference. And the uh, pressure 27.65, so those are pretty much spot on. Um, there was a little discrepancy in the uh, relative humidity. Kestrel saying 57, the Fury saying 52 degrees, whether that's a different or not. And there was a little bit of difference as far as time of me changing. And we do have, uh, let me show you guys. We have a lot of clouds in the sky, so the so you know the pressures and everything else is kind of uh, going. So I think the RH, depending on, and it was pretty close to the same time that we did it. So what I'm going to do now, and most most importantly, the part of hitting a target, right? I'm not at a range. I'm actually in the middle of uh, kind of this cool little new cul-de-sac they're going to be putting in. Not a cul-de-sac, but a roundabout. And I'm gonna to try to get data for all of us. 
and I'm going to confirm that it's right utilizing the Kestrel and putting it up against the Fury as well to see which one is working. So right now I'm on, uh, there's three profiles within the Fury 5000 AB. So you can actually have three rifles already pre-done in here. Myself right now I have uh, the Skittles rifle, which is the six Creedmoor. And then I also have uh, my Voodoo as well in there. So we'll take some distances. We'll see what the ballistics come out with here. And then we will uh, see what it does in here as well. We'll see how close we are. If we can stay within a tenth, if we can stay within a tenth, sorry for the vehicle noise, but it is what it is. Um, I might not run this after I start in the morning. I'll just confirm that everything's good. And doing these tests are definitely going to help to see if this is something that, uh, if I could just run this as a standalone unit and not utilize the Kestrel. So what I will do is we'll start off, we'll start off pretty short here. Let me go here. So first target is 280 yards, 280 and we got 0.6. So I'll write that down. I got 0.6 let me go here make sure I'm on the right rifle and then uh, 280 yards 280 yards is is 0.66 so the one thing about this is it'll round up for you now um, Basically, 0.66 could be 0.7, or it could be you could leave it at 0.6, depending on how your rifle's shooting for the day. Let me see what this says, though. So there's a perfect 280 feet yards. I mean, yeah, and it's straight up 0. 0.6. So. So far, we're doing good. So far, I wouldn't need this. Now we'll go out to some farther distances. Three twenty-six point eight. Three twenty-six point eight. Oops. Oh, so so far, the Kestrel checked out on that one. Three forty-six. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Uh, 346 oops too much 346 is 0.103 on this so let me make sure I'm good here so 326.3 yards it's showing 0.8. One of the best things I could do, audio is loud and clear on my end. Awesome, Joaquin. Um, is this is what you need to do when you're actually at a range. Um, right now, I would be confirming that. So I'm going to jump over to the cardboard that I used at VOD a couple weeks ago. And I'm going to give you an idea of what you're really trying to do. Today, I'm trying to go to really far distances. Um, I was able to go, which wasn't that far, but 1,026 yards. We got a lot of overcast, and we're having trouble because there's really nothing out there besides uh, unreflective trees out in the distance. So you can see out there, there's in it, those mountains right up in here. Trying to range stuff up in there is kind of difficult. So let me go grab the cardboard, and I'll show you guys. You guys can check out the full runner. <laughs> That's the Rickmobile right there. All right, so here's something that I was doing. The other day when I tested this at the range, I basically wrote down the yardage. I wrote down the Fury. I wrote down the Kestrel and the corrections. 
So the Kestrel and the Fury were basically spot on. Everything was identical. You would have uh, discrepancies like your Fury is going to tell you 0.1 at 171 yards, where your Kestrel is going to tell you 0.12. It's going to give you that the thousandth or the yeah the thousandth area, I guess. And then it's up to you to decide whether you want to go up or down. So if you round everything up, say six and above, or whatever your method of madness will be running your Kestrel, just keep it consistent so you know. Yeah. So if you go through here, you're going to see that the discrepancy is at right here at 1.5. So Kestrel and the Fury are showing 1.3. And uh, the actual correction for the rifle was at 1.5. Same thing with 450. It was showing 1.6. Kestrel was showing 1.62. And the correction, dialing in the scope to get a, a nice, good center hit was 1.7 um, at 450. And then we'll just jump all the way down here to uh, 691. So the Fury was showing 3.3. The Kestrel was at 3.4. And the actual correct call would have been 3.5. So. There's that 10th pass 400 that um, that I got to uh, basically try to decide which which way I want to go here. So I will say that the uh, I will say that the glass on the Fury are amazing. I will say that it's nice if you're a hunter. And maybe you don't have a Kestrel and uh, you're basically trying to get rid of a rangefinder because you already got binoculars instead of having two things of gear. Um, again, I'll, I'll emphasize that I would not get rid of the Kestrel. Kestrel is a great tool to always have, along with data on paper, even more importantly than anything. But let's, let's range some stuff and we'll get an idea how spot on we still are. So that last one... At 328, I didn't like the numbers. I can't remember what it was. I can go back here. But it was off a little bit. So three, okay, I'm gonna do, uh... all right, so 333.3 yards. And that is coming up with 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 333 yards. This is showing 0 0.96. So right now we're doing pretty good. How would you compare the Fury to the Kilos? Um, I would say I prefer these over the Kilos, but for a reason. So it doesn't, I guess the biggest argument would be it's not apples to apples it's a uh, it's really not you have you have a rangefinder bino right two of them they're both rangefinders and binos but now you have you have you have the uh, applied ballistics in here so the price is is about almost double uh, the glass on on the on the kilos is great I like the vortex glass a little better. I like the uh, red dot. Basically, let me go over here. The difference, one of the differences I like better about the Fury over the Kilo is on a on the, or uh, yeah. So the Kilo has a circle, and I know it's probably tough for you guys to see. And that's the range. That's what you're going to range something with. What's nice about the Fury is it actually has. <clears throat> it has the same circle but it has it has basically like almost a reticle in it as well um, the bonus to this for me is I, I feel like I can I can uh, not only will your your glass stay level right but you can also if you're finding if you're trying to get like sticks and stuff it's a little bit easier to line up those really thin target stands um, to really get you know I, what I would think or at least my opinion is a better shot at getting a range with it so that's one of the other options the wind thing is huge so you can't do any of the wind stuff you can't do any of the applied ballistics 
So if I was to do it all over again, um, now I will say in case you guys don't know, but um, I was given these from Vortex and, and quite a bit of stuff. So they have, they have sponsored the channel, but a lot of you guys know that, uh, well, one, I'll tell you if it sucks or not, but two is um, I've been using Vortex for a long, long, long time now. So it's not like some company just sent me stuff that I, I don't believe in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't just take any company if they wanted to send me stuff. If it sucks, it's gonna suck and I don't want you guys to buy something that sucks. So I'm gonna tell you if it sucks or not. Um, so that that's basically the difference between like a really quick rundown of the difference between the, uh, the Furies and the BDX 3000s. Do both work? They work well. One of the things that sucks is I don't like having to be uh, tied up to the Kestrel. And then um, I, had, I had one match where I didn't turn it on and leave it on. So it kept trying to turn off. Um, so I'd go to grab the, basically go to grab the range finders, try to get a range and it was, my Kestrel wasn't linked back up to it again. So I'd have to wake up and do all that kind of stuff. So I didn't like that. Um, but that was just me and uh, I know a lot of people do it. So it definitely is, a, it works, but it's just nice. If, if everything matches up, it's just nice per se to have just this and call it done. So I'm gonna go to a distance here. I'm gonna go to the farthest point. It's a dead oak, it's a dead tree out there. Just bright as day. That's at uh, 1,026 yards. So that'll be kind of our farthest limit for this match, I think is like a thousand or something like that. So let me go to 1,026. All right, so 1,026, the Kestrel saying 6.86. Uh, 6 you guys might be able to see that depending on the lighting. So that's what I would dial up my rifle to or hold at 6.86. So let's see what this says. Are you going to get rid of the BDX? No, no, let's see. Six point three. 6.8 see that's a lot so that's basically five tenths of a mil that would probably be a miss depending on the target that would more than likely definitely be a miss depending on the target so inside of here which is really in the app on your phone when you go to uh basically um change your dsf or kind of calibrate it you're calibrating your DSF, they give you two lines that you can calibrate your DSF on. And uh, that information, and the reason why the Kestrel is such an important tool still, is all that information, if you got this dialed in, you can input that into the Kestrel, and you should be pretty dang close. So that would be one I don't like. So that's, uh, that's two out of a four, basically, uh, that I've been messing with. So right now we're at a 50%. So let's find something else. 478 is 1.8. 478, 1.8. Let's see how that one does. 478. I'll kind of just work my way out. What I should have done so I don't have to go back so far. Okay, 478. 1.89. So 1.8 and 1.89, that'd be one tenth basically. And that's pretty good. One thing that you will not be able to do is this thing is continuously taking the weather as far as I know. Or this thing, since I have it locked, and let me change it, that's what I should have done on that uh, 12 whatever it was, 1,026 feet deal, was I'm basically locked into the temperature that I was at, say, it could have been three hours ago, right? If I, if I didn't spin this back up again. This is basically doing that 
the entire time, I believe. So as, uh, as the temperature comes up or down, the relative humidity comes up or down, or if I'm hiking, maybe I'm hunting and I'm going up the side of a mountain and the pressures are getting different, um, that would be some of the things that come into play. So I will spin this back up real quick just to see. And we were only off one tenth at uh, 478. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that as good. That one's good. Let's go to the next one and then I'll spin it up live. So let's go to something that's about 600 yards, which is probably right about there. Okay, so 670, basically is at the end of that tree line over there. 670 and it's uh, 3.1, 670, 3.1. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it not live and then if it's close or not close, I'll spin it up, see what, see if it changes at all. 670. My memory's going to heck. Let's see here. Okay, so we're at 670. It's showing 3.36. I'd probably just do 3.4. This is showing 3.1. This is showing three one. So this originally says 3.36. So let's, let's spin this up. It has gotten warmer, the sun popped out again. Whether that'll be a difference or not, probably not, but let's check. So right now it's still showing 84 degrees. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 84 degrees, maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna go ahead and go live. I'm gonna spin this thing up real quick. So basically when you're doing this, you're basically taking that hot air that may be inside of the sensor and you're giving it whatever temp it is outside right now. Kind of just clears that, clears that little sensor right there. All right, so I'm locking it. So I'm at 83 still, and I'm still at 336. So the temperature hasn't changed. There is a discrepancy a little bit. Uh, 33, and I went up, and let's just say I only used this, and it said, 336 I would probably leave it at 36 usually when I go 789 is when I'll go up to the next number um, so let's just call it three let's call it three three I'm still off two tenths right there so that might be I might need to do a little bit of uh, detailing in my in my app in order to my ballistics are a little bit different than what it is right now so let's just call that a miss let's say that's a really small target at um, 670 and I missed that target. So right there, I'm down another, I'm down there, I'm down another hit. Let's see if we can get a little bit farther. Let me use something a little closer. That was 1,022. Here's 859. 859, 4.7. 859 is 4.7. And now I'm gonna check the Kestrel. Eight fifty nine. Eight fifty nine. Five point zero. Five point zero. You really could round up to the tenth. Be five point one. You could dial in your scope or hold. Um, this is showing four point seven. Probably another miss, so I'm still needing to work on. I'm gonna. The reason why I'm out here is making sure this works. So I didn't want to run just this, thinking I was good. I wanted to test it again. The other day at VOD, it worked really well together. They worked matched up. Uh, there was discrepancies again when it came to what the actual correct call was for the rifle to, to impact center a target, and that was only the most it was was. It was a. Uh, Two tenths was the most it was of change. So really not much depending on the size of the targets. I'm not exactly sure how big these targets are gonna be out there. But the better data I can get in here, better data I can get in here is gonna help me get an impact. So if I do everything right, which I usually don't, but if I can do everything right and the ammo I loaded uh, shoots uh, you know, consistently with uh, low SDs and extreme spreads, We'll, uh, we'll maybe hit some contact. We'll hit some stuff here. What's up, Yoel Adams? 
Let's see, how is it waterproof raining? I haven't tested that. I don't know. Um, actually, I haven't even read anything on that as well. Once I got this, I've been basically trying to work on ballistic stuff and not worry about it in the rain. Are you watching the field for winds downrange? Um, I haven't been. I've been basically doing yardage. That is a point, though, when you start looking at some... Like a minute ago, we had a four mile an hour, basically winds coming out of, if that's the target area, out of our nine o'clock, basically a, a left to right full value wind. It was, uh, and so you can see this, I do run one of these, basically a flag telling you kind of where to go. We were using that uh, flagging, that plastic flagging stuff. And uh, this stuff's actually made out of like a, a thin nylon or a kind of a silky very light material so you can get some pretty good readings from the wind on it and that actually came with uh, my it was either the spotting scope or the, um, the sp oh. oh shit man down over here y'all good oh yeah i'm good oh, man. Um, so we got a little live action there there you go <laughs> You just never know what's going to happen when you're out in the middle of nowhere filming. Um, <laughs> where was I? I forgot where I was. So hopefully the discrepancies, we can get them even closer and dialed in. Probably I'll have a few days before, a few days before I fly out and then I have a couple of days before the match and I'll start tweaking with some more stuff just to confirm everything's good. And uh, there's a quite a bit of a good manual on... Uh, the information on how to utilize this thing to the best fullest effect and I actually it was one of the manuals I had read but those manuals are uh, you know I, I feel like I need to read it again and you know just confirm like trying to find how to calibrate this to get this to talk to my phone was fairly simple the problem was I couldn't without my manual here and this is just a matter of keeping better memory um, how you how you get it to calibrate to restart over make sure the compass is good so when we fly off to somewhere um, and if you guys didn't know when you hit this target it actually will tell you your your uh, point of direction in a compass so so it makes it kind of nice if you're trying to give or uh, relay information to somebody in that that type of way all right, so the next one as soon as this great family here moves down the street. Where are they at? Oh, they're over there. I saw the road, but I didn't see anybody. I said, they're invisible. All right, so. Eight fifty nine. Four point seven, 8.59, I just did that one, 4.7. So that's still the same. And this is still showing five. So we're looking at uh, eight, five, four, seven. Yeah, that's like three tenths, almost four, depending on if you round up the point eight. So, uh, let's see. Let's go see this target over here. Two eighty eight point six. Two eighty eight point six. This will be the last one. Let's see if we're close. Two eighty eight point seven. Point seven. Point six, you got a tenth again. So it is what it is. But that's kind of uh, what I've noticed working with the two of these um, not together, right? If I linked them, basically I would utilize this information and send it to there for ballistics and uh, ballistic information. The problem with that is I wanted to see in the test, basically out in the field, was how good can this do by itself without this? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and um, hopefully you guys are having fun today. 
Who, uh, who's out there? Let's do roll call, see how many people are out there. I know there's quite a few of you, and I missed them. I missed all the comments on most of them, but um, appreciate it. Let's see. Adama says, I would do the same learning up on the UI and options so you don't feel like you have to get a book when you're yeah that's the thing like when i showed up i'm like oh i should have brought the dang book but i want to get to the point where i don't need the book it's like oh yeah in order to calibrate you hit here hit here and now you're, you're done you rotate this around so if you guys aren't familiar with this compass calibration basically you compass calibrate it you turn it around you turn it like this uh i can't remember what the time frame was. it was like 25 seconds what's up tim what up david um you go like this in order to calibrate the compass so as your um, direction you know direction to the target you can hit the button and it'll know so that when you test wind out say it's over here it knows that you're shooting that way and this is over here so basically you got a full value win other than that any questions before i get out of here wanted a quick video again able to join li live chat from yeah czechoslovakia what's up how are you, buddy? Hopefully you're having a great day. What time is it over there? Is it nighttime or daytime? Looks like you may need to get, need a link then, link them. Yeah, Tyler, there's a, I think what I need to do is just confirm that the data is the same. So the ballistics are off in the, in the binos or the Kestrel. They're not linked, uh, defusking. So basically if I, if I had this live and I had it basically paired up with this, this information will be going over to there and then there would be no difference at all kind of like you would do with the with the kilos the the sig bdx not the kilo yeah the kilo the sigs so it'd be kind of the same thing what i was trying to do is see if i could get away with not having the kestrel because inside of here it has the, it has basically your relative humidity your barometric pressure kind of stuff and then also your uh did I already say relative humidity? And then the temperature. So it's kind of basically capturing all that already. The inside of here also has already been downloaded via the app that Fury has, Vortex has for the Fury. So it knows everything. So when it, when it gets a certain temperature and a certain uh, relative humidity and all this stuff, it's basically giving you the numbers um, of what you should be dialing or holding in your reticle. Which is, which is a really big bonus if you don't want to mess with extra equipment. So this thing kind of, someone had asked last night in the chat, can this thing replace your Kestrel and your, your range finder? And <clears throat> I really thought about it for a second before I answered that question. And I, and I would say no, it can't, I would never get rid of the Kestrel. Um, I mean, I already have one. There's no reason to get rid of it. And I can always confirm or deny off of it be like man that's way off let me check something else go over here you know you can kind of bounce the numbers back and forth and um so it's another option basically tyler Orth, is uh is i a constant link or does it sync in which you would have to resync it next time you spin up the kestrel uh, right now they're separate the um if you left it live, if these were linked together and you're going to shoot a match, I would leave it live. The reason why I'd leave it, but you got to be careful that it's not out in the hot sun and giving you really wrong answers because now your your uh, your information is going to be completely wrong. This thing, if you have it, say you have it sitting on a backpack out in the sun, and you're uh, you're engaging targets, it's gonna this is going to keep reading higher and higher and higher. It's going to show 103 degrees. And it's still only 79 degrees out, so you know your your uh, ballistics are going to change quite a bit when you get something crazy like that. So you got to be careful. I always leave mine. Uh, I take it off live after I spin it. That way the thing's not going up and down, and and it's trying to. Uh, it's basically, I don't know if it really is, but it's basically trying to work harder, keeping up with checking every so often. But I don't know if that's factual or not. I just know that I'd rather have it stay consistent until I feel like the wind is the wind, not the wind so much. The temperatures have dropped or, or went up. So it kind of makes sense. Thanks, Rick. Next time I'm at the match, I'm going to pick up a cart for one of these. Yeah, there you go. Definitely try it. So other than that, 
any other questions and I'll get, get out of your guys' hair. I wanted to get some information. So right now what I've learned today, and now and there's still some options of me tweaking with the applied ballistics inside of the app that connects to the Fury, is I was off, I think the most I was off was like three or four tenths. Three or four tenths may not be, depending on the size of the target, may not be, oh yeah, sir, yeah, definitely pick one of those up. Um, may not be enough or it may be a lot. It may be a miss for sure. So that's one of those things you're going to have to be good with. If you're shooting an elk and, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you have a large target per se or something like that and you're, you know, your kill zone's that big, may not be as big of a deal depending on the distance. But if you're shooting, let's say, a uh, one MOA target at, you know, 900 yards, you might probably gonna miss that thing because you still got to deal in wind and everything else. So it'd probably be a miss for me. So um, other than that, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you guys, but I will be doing more. Uh, more testing and stuff like that and i'll get back to you when i when i get the information hopefully this helps you guys uh, maybe decide to pick one up not pick one up whatever the case is and uh, it's definitely a great tool for sure the fury doesn't measure wind speed right no what it does the wind speed it does not adamas but what it does do is i wish i could show you like put it in the reticle it's such a pain in the butt that it doesn't work but these buttons here These buttons on top, this one here, let me see, make sure I'm pointing to it. And this one, <clears throat> once you know the wind, so like again, having a Kestrel, being able to, to actually confirm that you got a, a five mile an hour wind with a 15 mile an hour gust, what is the price of the Fury? I thought they were 1500 bucks. It's right in there. MSRP, I believe is 1500. Don't hold me to that because I'm not sure, but that's my guess for the day. Um, you know, you use your Kestrel, you know you got a five mile an hour breeze and a 15 mile an hour gust. You can actually add that into here. So once you punch in the number, there's these little arrows inside of the reticle and you, um, you keep punching the wind and then you can tell it which direction it's coming from by going like this. So let's say we're shooting here straight ahead let me make it straight. There you go. Straight ahead. And I know that with my Kestrel, I got wind coming out of basically my nine o'clock. I can point this in this direction and I hit this button right here. So I told it how much miles per hour it was, but when I hit this, because it's, I compass calibrated this already, I hit this, it knows that I am basically getting a full value wind coming left to right. So then in, inside of the, cause this is the side that shows you, which is the right side. I don't know if YouTube switches the thing reversed or whatever. Inside of the reticle, it'll tell you that, you know, let's say you're shooting a target at a certain distance. It'll tell you your ballistic that you need to dial or, or hold. And then on the below that, it'll tell you what to either hold or dial for wind. And it'll basically say, you know, left, uh, I don't know, two tenths or, depends on how far away we're shooting but it'll basically tell you um you know left hold left two two tenths or a mil or whatever it is depending on what you're shooting it's deleting two pieces of equipment ideally so no spare battery binos no spare wind meter is there tools for one for 1500 bucks it's three tools that's a good way to think of it um but again i'm gonna i'm gonna completely tell you that I would never get rid of the Kestrel. Um, it's just a great small tool that you can have and have it as a backup. But a lot of you guys that say hunters, shooters that are just shooting competitively, you got to find the targets, especially on those hidden match style targets. You need some type of binos. A spotting scope, though amazing, is too much of a pain to, what's up Todd, is too much of a pain to try to hike around with. So this is kind of our best option right now. 
Now they make binos that are more powerful. And sometimes you, I wish these were more powerful so that I could find tar, I could find hidden targets farther away than, than uh, you know, be able to see them a little bit easier. But the problem is they don't make that, they don't make those yet. So this is what you get. The uh, the Sig BDX 3000s are the same uh, magnification as these are. These are a 10 power. They're both uh, 10 by 42s. This just has a little more bells and whistles and a little more stuff that you can do with it. What's up, everybody? What's up, Barry? Um, so the, the options are a little bit better. I will say that the case, the case is a little bit nicer on the uh, Vortex. It, they do do the chest one. So your options with the SIGs back in the day were either to have the chest one or it came with the strap. The ones that uh, come with this are both. So you can either run them as like a guide where you keep your, your binos here. Um, that doesn't work so well for someone shooting prone um, just because it's right in your way. So these are going to be attached for this next match. They're just going to be attached here. The clamp that's holding on to the uh, Fury is actually a really right stuff clamp. It's a polymer clamp. Let's see, agreed, with, agreed it would be smart to have 15 by 50s with the reticle in them someday. Uh, let's see. Have a great weekend, everyone. Be safe. That's what it costs. Yeah, four, yeah, so I was right, 1500 bucks. I didn't want to confirm it, but yeah, I believe that. I, I was pretty darn sure, but I didn't want to say in case they were like 2500 bucks. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, some of the things we got to worry about, Tyler, is once we start getting those bigger binos, you know, you're talking more weight. And um, does the Fury carry... The same vortex yes it does actually which is really nice as far as i know i would say yes um everything i've seen all the vortex stuff is basically a lifetime warranty that was one of the huge things reasons why i went vortex is because these things are investments you've heard me say it probably once or twice or a billion times they're expensive you know like a razor hg gen 2 uh, four and a half to 27 is not cheap um, but it's an investment you buy it once and like we say buy once cry once kind of deal i would rather save up the money buy a good optic that you know is going to work out in the field and um, work well and not have to sweat it if all of a sudden i drop it off the side of a cliff and i break it and nobody wants to warranty it so um that's what it is and the vortex kind of like uh like Dylan reloading stuff is uh, no BS warranty. I mean, it, it, you break it, you drop it, you run it over. Doesn't matter if you you know you self inflicted it on accident. You you know you put your rifle on your bumper and then you took off to go home and you ran the damn thing over. You know they, they don't they don't mind people making accidents because that's what happens. Things happen. So I don't know. That's a huge bonus to it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna get out of here. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Along with me, I was learning stuff, trying to figure out what I need to do. As of right now, I don't have the answer to whether I'm going to be linking this the whole time or not. But we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get out to Wyoming. <laughs> so again, this video is brought to you by Vortex Optics. If you guys are interested in looking at a great glass for your rifle, some stuff for your AR pistols and all sorts of stuff, spotting scopes and range finder binos like this um, definitely go check check it out go check out vortexoptics.com i know they'll have what you're looking for because they got everything from a very budget budget friendly scopes all the way up to the very very nice hd version so you guys take care